what's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand the different gate strategies used with assistive devices so that you can better teach your patients and also pass the NPTE. This is just a really quick review, but hopefully you'll have a little bit better understanding of the different types of gait that you can teach your patient and how you can teach them to use their assistive devices. When your patient gets this assistive device for the first time, they get little to no training and are basically just handed a device off the rack or they buy it off Amazon. And so you'll probably have to first set up the device to the appropriate height and then teach them how to actually use it depending on their cognition, balance, strength, and weight bearing status. For First, we have two point gait, which you can use if your patient has two crutches or two canes in their hands. Basically, the opposite arm and leg are going to move at the same time. Left leg, right arm move forward. Left arm, right leg move forward. For three point gait, you've got a few different options as far as devices you can use. You can have a walker, you can have crutches, you can have a cane, but basically you're going to move the device forward first and then the injured leg and then the uninjured leg. With four point gait, we go back to using devices one in each hand and basically each device and each leg will take its own step. My right arm moves forward with a crutch or a cane, then my left leg moves forward. My left arm moves forward, my right leg moves forward. This allows a little bit more stability as there's always three points of contact with the ground. However, it is a little bit slower. If you have a patient who is non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing and has to swing their injured leg forward, we have two types of gait called swing two and swing through gait. So swing two is usually for patients that don't have quite as good balance and so they'll move the device forward and then they will hop with their good leg and swing that injured leg just to the point of the devices. With swing through gait, they're going to actually swing their legs past the point of the devices and take another step with them. So this is usually used for people who are a little bit more athletic. I also briefly want to cover stair navigation. Usually the rule is up with the good and so they'll step up with their uninjured leg first followed by the injured leg and then down with the bad. So if they're descending stairs they'll put their injured leg down first and then their uninjured leg. Ideally this is temporary until the patient is either pain-free or has improved weight bearing status or is strong enough to return to to a reciprocal gait pattern. Either way, you always want them holding on to the rail and preferably with some kind of stability device in the other hand, which will help make it so that they don't have to just hop up the stairs. So if they're using a walker, this can be pretty tricky. Usually stair navigation will only really happen if they have a standard walker so it doesn't have wheels on it. And that walker is actually turned sideways so that they can press straight down on one side using that hand grip and then have the rail on the other side. If they're using crutches or a cane, they can turn them sideways and just carry them up or they can use them in the hand that is opposite where the rail is. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy. Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. This is the best gait if one limb is unable to bear the full weight. The crutches move forward or the walker, then the injured leg, and then the uninjured leg. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy. Or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Otherwise, good luck studying. Go change the world.